Hello and welcome to this video on the sample spaces for combined outcomes. Now just to define what I mean by sample space first, sample space just means the set of all possible outcomes. And by the word set, I just mean the kind of collection effectively. Now to give an example, if I wanted uh, the sample space for the throw of a dice, then the sample space would be the set of all possible outcomes you might see when we throw a dice. So we could see a 1, we could see a 2, we could see a 3, we could see a 4, we could see a 5, or we could see a 6. And those curly braces, by the way, means a set. Don't worry too much about that notation, but if you look at my videos on sets and Venn diagrams, then you will see this particular notation. But it just means a collection of 1 to 6. Now, I could similarly have the throw of um, 1 coin. What would be the sample space for the throw of 1 coin? Well, it would be just the set of, well, you can see heads or tails. I'm just going to use H for heads and T for tails. But what if we had somehow the combined outcome from, say, two throws? Now, we could do that as a sort of table. So we could have the first throw here, what we got in the first throw, and we, what we got on the second throw here. So in the first throw, we might have got heads or tails, and the second throw, we might have got heads or tails. And we're interested in the kind of combined outcome from both uh, throws. So if you've got heads or heads, we could sort of write it as heads, heads, to indicate that we got heads for both. If we've got tails for the first row and heads for the second row, we could write that as tails, heads. So we can write it as a sequence of letters to mean that we saw tails in the first row and heads on the second row. This one similarly. First row, heads, second row, tails, we write that as HT. And finally, if both the first and second row were tails, we could write that as TT to represent the combined outcome. But you could just write it as a single list like this. You could just write a set of HH, TH, HT and TT, and that would be the sample space for two throws of a coin. So we can see that we actually have four different combined outcomes. Now let's do these two questions here. I throw a coin three times using H for heads and T for tails. List of sample space for the three throws combined. Now we need to list out all the possibilities for three throws. So I'm not going to use a table this time. I'm doing just going to list them out. So they could all be heads, so it could be heads, heads, heads. And then let's be systematic about how we order these. I'm going to sort of fix the first two and change the last one each time. So we've got heads, heads, and tails as well. Now I've exhausted all the way we could have heads, heads. So let's change the second one now. We could have heads, tails, and then we could either have a third heads, or we could have the third one being tails. So we get those ones. Now we've exhausted all the ones where we start with Head. So now we go into all the tails ones. So we could have tails, heads, heads, tails, heads, tails, 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 heads, and tails, tails, tails. So there we go. We can see that we have eight different possible outcomes in our combined sample space from the free throws. Now you have to combine the outcomes numerically. So this is quite a common question, particularly in GCSE papers. I throw two fair dice and add the values. Draw a table to represent the sample space. So if we do a table, now a table is particularly good when we've got two different things going on. So we've got two fair dice, so I'm going to have the first throw here, and I've got the second throw here. And what could we get on each throw of a dice? Well, we could get one, two, three, four, five, six, and I get one, two, three, four, five, six. And it says that we're adding the values from the two throws. So I'm just going to put a plus here so I don't forget what we're actually doing with the two numbers. So let's say the first throw was 1 and the second throw was 1. What would be the combined value when we add them? Well, it would be 2. 1 plus 1 is 2. And we could simply do it with these other values. So 2 plus 1 is 3. 3 plus 1 is 4. 4 plus 1 is 5. And then we've got 6, 7. And then 2 plus 1 is 3. And then we can continue filling this table up because this will allow us to answer some questions about probability in a second. Now we've got our finished table, let's answer these questions in B. So hence determine the probability that the total of your two fair dice is four. Now, in how many of these combined outcomes do we see a 4? Well, there we get a total of 4, there we get a total of 4, there we get a total of 4. So it's 3 out of something. So the probability that of a total of 4 is 3 out of something. But 3 out of what? 
Well, what's the total number of possible combined outcomes? Well, we can see we've got 36 numbers in this table. Look, it's 6 across, 6 down, 6 times 6 is 36. So there's 36 numbers here, so it must be 3 out of the 36 possible combined outcomes. And we can simplify that to 1 over 12. What about the probability of at least 9? Well, let's count how many we have in the table. At least 9, we can see all of these are 9. And then it's all of this section of the table we have at least 9. So let's count how many we have. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So it's 10 out of the total 36 possibilities. And we can simplify that. That's going to be 5 18ths.